digital library development creation history many modules we have seen in this module we will discuss about digital library standards that will cover standards and protocol and their need and importance in digital libraries interoperability and data exchange in digital libraries and role of standards and protocol important standards and protocol applicable for digital libraries why do we need standard or what is protocol the standard is a general rule to be followed by all professional for the data exchange in library protocol is the technical compatibility or rules for communicating each other if i am giving a document in a format which is not known to you there is no use of it then so we have to maintain a common understanding that is what is protocol so this module will cover this two standards and protocol we have already seen building a digital library requires number of infrastructural and software and hardware components there are no turnkey kind of project or monolithic system available for digital library you go to a, a store and purchase dig, best digital library infrastructure not possible it's a combination built uh, built as well as depending on many of the technologies and infrastructure which is already there this gives a challenge when digital libraries are created there could be different systems interacting each other so digital libraries are collections of disparate systems and resources connected through a network and made interoperable individually it is built by different people but may all together designed for interacting each other for example when i tell a story i want to communicate with uh, one person in china and i talk hindi or english and the chinese man talk only chinese what happened what i talk in hindi cannot be understood by the chinese man so there should be a common understanding i will talk only in the language which is known to him or understandable by him so this technology also this applies that is what uh, to have seamless integration of various components and for its effective functioning we need uh, some standards and standards and protocol have a major role to play in building digital library uniform standards and protocols are prerequisite for data transfer exchange interoperability among digital libraries uh, this library generally we transfer library content let us take the simple thing of catalog catalog code can be in different format it it can fo follow something called the common ccf it can also can be built in dublin code it also can be made in mark 21 or mark 21 excel so if we put a standard now onwards whatever you are preparing it should be in mark 21 then mark 21 become the standards for data exchange this is required for exchanging data between two systems so protocol is a serious prescribed steps to be taken protocol is a set of rules to be taken usually in order to allow for the coordinated action of multi parties in the world of computers protocols are used to allow different computers protocol is a very very common term in computer like terminology because in software it is used in hardware it is used to work between different computers <coughs> computer protocols are frequently formalized by national and 
International Standard Organization. There is an organization which is known as ISO, that is International Standard Organization. Then communication, there is something called ITU. So all these are the standards. So if you are following ISO standard, that means all products are meeting the same specification and functional requirement. Protocol is accepted by most of the parties that implement it can be considered as a standard. Protocol is a set of rules. If I adopt it, it becomes standard. So protocols and standards are generally used together to give the concept of it. And every protocol is not a standard. And every standard is not a protocol. Correct, no? Because every protocol means rules you generate, but people may not follow it. But uh, you, people are using some standard, but not based on rules. So that is why this last statement. Now let us see the definition and importance. Standards support cooperative relationship amongst multiple vendors and implement and implement that. Standard make it possible to share and collaborate in development of products, processes across institutional and political boundaries. Standards are supported by a range of national and international organizations, including professional associations. Let us see some of them which you are which are known to you, like electrical and engineering electronics engineers. The standard is IEEE, I E E E, Institute of Electronic Electrical and electronic engineers. Then we have ANSI standard, American National Standards Institute. Then we have B BSI, British Standards Institute, institution. Then India we have a standard. We have seen about gold when you are purchasing BIS hallmark. That is a standard. That is Bureau of Indian Standard, BIS. BIS, BIS standard is almost available for many products. Then International Organization for Standardization, even though it is looking as IOS, but uh, the more accepted acrim, acronym is ISO, ISO standard. Then we have NISO standard, that is from US, US National Information Standards Organization. So information, as far as it is concerned, NISO is one of the very popular standard. And these are the standards supported by national and international agencies. Now, is there any standard for digital library? Yes, there are. The, these are there are organizations responsible for digital library creation. One example is DLF, Digital Library Federation. It's a consortium of libraries and related agencies as one of its objectives identifies standards of digital collections and network, network access. You can go to the website called ditchlib.org. The DLF operates under administrative umbrella of Council of Library and Information Resources. It's based in Washington, D.C. And another one is Library of Congress. They play an important role in maintaining several key standards. I just mentioned MARC for bibliographic records. It is maintained by Library of Congress, MARC, and the development of MARC with XML environment. Those who have heard about MARC earlier, which is a bibliographic standard, MARC stands for Machine Readable Catalogs. It's a bibliography standard adopted and accepted by almost all automation software in libraries. So this MARC is also from Library of Congress. So you can go to Library of Congress website that is www.loc.gov which plans an important role on MARC which within an XML environment for exchange of information. The International Federation of Library Association, IFLA, is again a site or a uh, institution under its IFLANET digital libraries, which gives resources about variety of relevant standards. So this site called www.ifla.org slash 2, Roman 2 slash metadata.html. This site gives a lot of uh, links to the relevant standards for digital library. Now communication protocol. 
friends, when I am using some of the technical terms here, don't get scared of it, but you are using it every day, whenever you are touching computer or internet. So you can try to understand the different communication protocols. Communication protocols are predefined set of prompts and responses which two computers follow while communicating with each other. Digital libraries are designed around internet and web technologies, which we already discussed. Digital libraries take the concept or use the infrastructure of internet and web technologies. So communication protocols are important in network as well as in communication. So uh, let me list out few protocols which are very commonly used in internet. The first internet is made using protocol called TCP IP. TCP IP stands for Transmission Control Protocol slash Internet Protocol. That's why we call TCP slash IP, uh, together TCP IP. This is the basic protocol in transferring data over internet. In 1984, Windsurf invented this protocol, uh, you, you must be recollecting that uh, internet was born in 1969. But this uh, internet has to wait for better use of it till 1984. This protocol is invented, TCP IP. TCP IP has uh, given such a boost to the internet for communication. So this is the basic protocol for communication, not for digital library. Any data communicate over internet, which has to use TCP IP. Now, there are other protocols also. TCP IP is not a single protocol. It's a glue or set of many, many protocol on that. The main protocol is TCP IP. That's why it is called. Like, uh, oh, we, we call a city name. When you are called, telling Delhi, many of the neighboring state also, uh, cities are also included in that place. Like that, TCPIP is named because it is the biggest protocol in that. But it also contains ICMP, RARP, lot of other protocols, glue. That's why we tell it's a glue of 100, per, 100 plus protocols. Then for document sharing between each other, we use something called hypertext transfer protocol. Many people must be seeing when any URL is used, you are writing HTTP colon slash slash then the name of the website. So what is that HTTP? In internet, there could be many, many services. So one, just one service is that worldwide web service, www, you give it, you get it in browser. Actually, the protocol used behind HTTP, this one website is HTTP. That's why the address start with HTTP. You can also have FTP, file transfer protocol. Then you have to write that FTP colon slash slash. But HTTP is the default protocol in browser. I, I'm sure that you know what is browser. Browser is that one is uh, Mozilla, other is Chrome, then Internet Explorer, then Netscape Navigator, a lot of that. Uh, Browsers are there, Firefox. Now, all these browsers, we can type a site name. If we are not giving anything, then it, it assumes that HTTP is the basic protocol. That's why it's called default protocol. And the other one is called FTP, file transfer protocol. This is for establishing communication between a client and a server in a digital library. If you want to share a big file from one location to other, you need to get connect each other for, and create a channel and start transferring. That is what is called file transfer protocol. HTTP comes as different packets and all assembled and give you in web page. FTP, it all comes from one file to other file. So big file can be transferred easily by using FTP protocol. Now look a little more detail about transmission control protocol and internet protocol. Internet is a packet switched network. When I'm telling packet switched, what does it mean? Packet means 
any information you are sending across network goes as simple small 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 packet for example i want to send my picture from one end to other end in a network internet the picture doesn't go as it is what it will do it will create the complete picture into different different blocks of data that is what is closed packet so that's why we call it as packet switched network means packet switching from one point to other point so immediately it goes from computer to nearer device from that device to the nearest router or hub or switch switch to the router router to the line and this is how it is transferring and these packets are sent individually using several different routes so tcpip becomes the communication channel for transferring by using packets of data internet protocol is responsible for assuring that packets are sent to the right destination so there are two components in this one is tcp other one is ip so tcp ip take care of the creation of packet and sending across ip takes care of assuring that all the splitted packets is reach the right destination all packets may not travel in one direct one route or packet may not travel sequentially also chances are that packet can travel first last packet can reach first also but there it get assembled so that is taken care by ip so let not go into the very detail of it it's part of computer science it is developed somewhere in 1970 but adopted in 1983 i told that means and, and protocol standard for arpanet and this is the predecessor to the internet and somewhere i have seen also that uh, year is like 1983 it is developed let us say uh, that uh, tcpip becomes basic protocol on this now let us watch this figure let me explain it now with a small diagram which is there in the screen in this diagram application server storage ethernet switch nas everything is available so if you look at this uh, application server and storage is in two different location which is connected to various devices to this so tcp ip is the protocol that controls creation of transmission path between computers on a single network and different network tcp ip defines how electronic devices like computers should be connected to internet so diagram shows that and how data should be transmitted and this is used as a universal protocol for public networks and many in south local area networks now hypertext i have already told what exactly hypertext is linked with the browsers the protocol is used for carrying request from client i request for i want this page and from the pages are returned from the server to this and http take care of that and the most important protocol that run on tcp ip used in www that is world wide web is http that's why we are typing http any url any web address mentioning it will be having http now let me take you to this diagram on the screen this http was invented by tim berners lee he is also now introducing web 2.0 co-author of 1.0 specification of http in 89 he was pro he proposed it and uh, that's why he is also uh, treated as the father of world wide web somewhere you will see that uh, his tim berners lee uh, he is given the sir title also which is one of the academic title or scientific title given to an inventor see the picture if i am using compu my computer i sit before my keyboard and i started typing i you open something called browser so here there is a browser and uh, my web page which i am looking must be there in server and server may be anywhere outside so the http work with the concept of web browser browser web becomes a client it can accept from data from a web server and it can come through service so 
client that is a user like me give a request to the server http request message and http response message come from there it display on browser as the pages this is simple bigger file as i mentioned uses ftp this is for transferring file on local area network or wide area network in local area network ftp may not be required for transfer but uh, wide area network ftp is a big solution good solution and protocol is a it's available in the same period and it was implemented between the mit's machines and FTP provides reliable and switch exchange of files with a different operating system. Whether you use uh, Unix, Linux, CentOS, or uh, Windows, the protocol remains the same as the basic architecture. Let us see a diagram for FTP. Here I have an FTP client, which is my normal machine. You know, uh, your client machine is also called Node. Or client machine is called desktop and you have a server where data is stored huge files that is what is called FTP server so the FTP client in my computer control a request to the controlled connection request to FTP server through a command it could be any command CW a lot of FTP commands are there then it get connected and data connection is established once the connection is established file transfer there are many internet sites that have established publicly accessible repositories of material that can be obtained using FTP and uh, if you have an FTP server if your data is not confidential they will put it on common access but FTP use you need to use a username and password many times default password is anonymous so you will see that anonymous FTP server server is meant for public but used as account name as anonymous Anon so you can type anonymous and see the same password or maybe password may not be there but login then you can transfer it this is all about FTP now after HTTP TCP HTTP FTP let us see now some of the standards in library digital library standards Catalog is the main tool for library to help a user. Now, when it is converted into online catalog, we need to follow a standard, bibliographic standard. That standards are called bibliography. It is nothing but with a description of the content as well as physical attribute of document and not document in library. They are generally very complex, cover most difficult intellectual part of object definition, bibliographic. These definitions are necessary for processing material, also for searching it. Most digital library software support doubling core metadata sets for bibliographic software. So it is standard, doubling core is very simple 15 field standard. We have used it for our biggest project called Shodh Ganga. But we modified the Dublin Core. So we are using modified Dublin Core metadata standard for Shodh Ganga. But there are other bibliographic standards. The most common one, acceptable one, internationally acclaimed one, India decided to follow this bibliographic standard. That is called MAR, Mission Readable Catalog. The important thing about MAR is that any kind of documents can be cataloged by using this. What are the documents available in library, books, journal, conference proceedings, and CD-ROM. And machine readable essentially means that not only human being, machine can read this catalog. That means machine, may, machine means programs. And it can interpret the data and this cataloging data. And it can convert to respective format, XML or whatever. So this was developed in 1960s in library by Library of Congress and uh, this is used this standard is uh, generally invented for computer to share information between library a mark contains bibliographic elements for content and physical and process there are several versions of mark in use around the world the most 
predominant be being MARC 21. MARC 21 is a library bibliographic standard using library automation. This was created in 1999, a result of the harmonization of US and Canadian MARC format, UNIMARC, and widely used in Europe. So UNIMARC was used in Europe, Canadian MARC was used in US, and they tried to take the best out of both and created MARC 21. The family of standards now include formats for authority records, holding record, classification schedule, communication in addition to the format of bibliography. So MARC is not only just a standard for some metadata, but also it uses a lot of additional information like authority record. Uh, authority record is that a common record, like New Delhi, if I am taking as a place name, people enter New Delhi in different forms. Somebody, somebody will write new capital, all small letter, Delhi. Somebody will write new, Delhi. Somebody will write all small letter. Somebody will write the new and uh, N and D capital. So there is no standard for writing a simple place name. Authority means whenever a new Delhi, somebody wants to sell, there is an authority file where you can select it. That is what, and Mark takes care of it, Mark 21. And Dublin Core standards, as I mentioned, this was originated conceived from other generated description of web resources at OCLC and NCSA, Metadata Workshop called in Dublin. So the place Dublin name in Ohio is given to the standard Dublin Core 1994 because it was discussed, part of a discussion it emerged in a workshop. Then metadata element that may be assigned to web pages to facilitate. DC has attracted attention of the resource description communication, such as museum, libraries, government agencies, commercial organization. And what is important about Dublin Core is, and simplicity of Dublin Core is, it use set of 15 core elements. Which are the elements? It is, as a library science professional, you should know all the 15 elements. I recommend, I suggest. Now. Any content in the library, whether it is digital or physical, it will have a title. So title is the most important, creator, subject and keyword, description, publisher, whether university or college or who is the publisher, contributor, date, resource type, format, resource identifier, source, language, relation, coverage and rights management. These are the core. 15 elements used in Dublin Core's bibliography standards. And Bib1 is also there. It's a simplified record from subset of MARC, you can say. Very simplified record from MARC. It is original format for transmission of record within Z39.50, Z39.5, dialogue between two systems for retrieval of data. It has element are mappable to both Mark and Dublin Core. So Bib1 is a descript small encapsulated version. And another one is called Text Encoding Initiative. It's an initiative, provides schemes of encoded test. Tests are not sent in normal form. Other feature on the text, both grammatical and linguistic, also content indicating such as the actors in a play can be identified, allowing for a rich analysis and these rules require that actual text be marked up with the SGML encoding. So MARC, Dublin Corp, Viv1, and TEI is as a standard. Now, another archival standard is that electronic archival description, EAD. The encoding scheme devised with the SGML. It's a mark of language framework to define the content description of documents and other archival object. It is defined as a minimum number of descriptive elements, but in an extensible fashion. Minimum number, but you can extend it. It is designed to create descriptive record which will assist in searching for digit original material in number of ways. So that is what is called EAD. And the other standard is Metadata Encoding and Transmission Standard, that is called METS. 
METS has the task of encoding descriptive or administrative and structural metadata for object in a digital library. This facilitate the management of such a document within a repository and then exchange between the repository. If you are storing a document in a repository, many people will try to take it from there. That is what is called harvesting the metadata. If you want to harvest metadata, it has to be in a standard. Now, with two repository can communicate each other by using this MET standard, METS. This is maintained by network development and mass standard office of the Library of Congress and is an initiative of Digital Library Federation. So MET is becoming a very, very common, popular, accepted standard because it is from Library of Congress as well as DLF. Now, METS format has seven major sections. I told it get expanded wherever. One is a METS header, the other is the descriptive metadata, then it also tell about the administrative metadata, then file section, structural map, structural links, and the behavior section. These are the uh, seven major sections which are METS format. And metadata object description schema, modes, was developed as a descriptive metadata scheme oriented towards digital object and drawing from the machine readable catalog format, mark format. And this is usable and defined, it provides descriptive metadata for digital object by regrouping the mark field. Uh, I asked one of my friends, how many fields are there in mark? And the answer he has given is 1200 plus mark fields. So everything cannot be 1200 field if you describe for any material. Then if it is defined for any material, then it becomes a kind of book, big book. So you have to group it in certain. So regrouping a mark of this record to new one is generally, and uh, translating the numeric code to readable English in XML. Mode was adopted by Digital Library Federation again for their Equifair project. So this, whenever there is a demand come, that will be developed by Digital Library Federation uh, as part of this. DLF intends to use mods to replace Dublin code for descriptive metadata. So to, in future, you may see mods in place of Dublin code. And the record structure for any of this. It's a physical and logical structure of record which hold the data. Like uh, a book is there, we need a record structure like author, first a title, then author, and which one appear where? This is what is the standard or logical structure. Typic typical bibliographic records may contain multiple fields of value length. It may occur more than once repeated. Therefore, the formats facilitate exchange of data between the system. For example, most digital library software support ISO 2709 for structure and individual record. And this com combination of 2709 and Z39.2 defines very, very flexible structure for individual rec records. And these two standards were developed together, but 2709 can be the structure of almost any type of records. The main structure of 2790 is ability to handle variable structure length field where the occurrence of the field is also variable. And now we have some of the encoding standards. We have seen the bibliography standards now. Quickly let us see encoding standard. The common standard is ASCII, and then you have Unicode. Unicode means every character in the world is simply having a Unicode. It is a universal encoding scheme using 18, sorry, 16 bits to represent each character. 8, 16, 32, these are the sequence generally go. So it use 16 bits for a simple character. That means by using 16-bit, 
all character in the world, whether Japanese, Chinese, or regional languages in India, everything can be represented. So Unicode has an advantage of giving a character encoding scheme. And Unicode is controlled by Unicode Consortium. And uh, equivalent to the ISO 10646 standard. The, in computer, every character is like ASCII, American Standard Code for Information Exchange, which defines all the characters necessary for English and many special characters. So ASCII is generally used for English, not for all languages. So ASCII and English plus printable character, non-printable character, etc. The code also used the basis for most of the 8-bit characters. And uh, 128 are left alone character. You have, have you seen how many characters are in the key? How many key presses are there in the keyboard? We have one not eight keyboard, 110 keyboard, 112, some special character for internet operation. So basically keyboard cannot have all characters. So we have shift key, alt key to generate more characters. So like that you can create at least 128 characters as long as that. And uh, Microsoft and IBM has produced number of national variant for this ASCII. Now encoding standard is over, information retrieval standard. When I try to retrieve from server data, is there any standard? Yes, there is a standard, which is called Z. A Z is pronounced as Z when I go to international body, so I am using Z. Z39.5 standard and ISO 23950 standard. Z39.50 is an ANSI NISO standard for information storage and retrieval. So for storing, you have to use this standard, then only others can retrieve by using standard. Z39.50 information retrieval standard. This protocol is used for searching and retrieving bibliographic records, not for the content across more than one library system. So bibliographic record can be exchanged by using Z39. This need a client program on the end and the server also should have a server program. So we have Z39, Z39.50 at server and client both will interact for exchange of meta bibliographic records. This is widely used the standards. So PMH is the metadata harvesting protocol. Combination of both this define the protocol for information retrieval. Support streaming of metadata from one repository to another. We in Infilmnet Center uses Shodh Ganga for a national repository of thesis. If it is OI PMH, any harvester can harvest the metadata. So we tell that this is our OAI PMH URL. When they get that open you uh, that kind of URL, they can harvest the metadata. Means the metadata of all theses can be downloaded by people if it is supported. So this is several service provider can har harvest metadata from various digital library. So I can sit as a harvester and go to all repository if it is I OA. Everything can be harvested and keep on my server for my users. So library can use this standard for harvesting the metadata. Let me show you how OIPMH work with a diagram. There is a client requesting for the document and uh, someone has to provide it. Or client means harvester. Now, in top you have so many repositories lined up. Data provider repository, one, two, three. Now, a service provider harvester, he will have a metadata database. So when he requests, he, it can be transferred all into the harvester. And this harvester can be used for metadata searching. And if a document is available, when you click the link, it will take to the respective repository. So original content is not stored in the client server, rather than it only have the metadata from various repository. The other standard use is open URL. Open URL is a versatile linking standard. URL, you know, universal resource locator. It's a address, HTTP colon slash slash www slash infilmnet.az.in. This full URL. But open URL is that 
It links use metadata for generating dynamic link and passing metadata about the resource to a resolver program. And two components. One is that URL of the open URL resolver followed by a description of the information object consisting of a set of metadata elements. So it will have a URL and what are the metadata it is having. These two are joined together, that is what is URL. And this is developed by Herbert Van D. Sombel, librarian at the University of Ghent. And NISO, National Information Standard Organization, has developed open URL and its data container, that is context object, as international AIC standard Z39.88, that is open URL standard. Then how open URL works? Let us see the picture once again. User click on an open URL and the open URL link available to the user by the provider makes source open URL. It source sent a metadata and the context information. Local resolution server resolve it, offer the user a menu of option and the menu is showing here opac or what published article whatever it is and that can be resolved this is how it is working now at the end let us quickly look at the format and media types available in digital it defines arrangement of a discrete set of data that allows computers different life format used uh, generally, what are the formats available in digital library? You have to text content, you have image content, you have graphics content, picture, musical works, computer program, databases, models and designs, video program, audio, and also computers, compound works, any of this information. Every object in a digital library needs to have a name or identifier which then only we can distinguish it between this. The file extension of digital library typically denote the format. If you, you are listening to music, you are having a format called MP3 most probably. That is the very common standard in audio. When you are watching a movie in computer, most probably that will be, or when you record it as a video file, it may be MP4, or it may be dot move, MOV. And there are so many formats available, but some common formats I told you. Every equipment will be using that tone. And the last extension will define which is the format. An information context of digital library may include combination of structured and unstructured data, numerical data, and its size. So simple text is, ASCII text is one format, and this is available in that document, you can read it. And text structured text format is there, which is called markup language. So markup language is HTML. For creation of web pages, we use a markup language called HTML. Then standard general markup language is one of the most important and popular structured text format, SGML. And this HTML is actually defined from SGML. SGML is the international standard by ISO, which then led to HTML hypertext markup, which is the basic of your web page. So browser and HTML make the complete web page available. Now, HTML extensible, after the HTML and HTML, the new open standard is extensible markup language, which is called XML. This is from HTML to interchange structured document. The difference is that unlike, like HTML, it is also deal with the structure of document formatting. And it is a simple text, highly flexible to transfer data between. Besides HTML and HTML, there are other format used in digital library. And very not very common, but no few names, that is TEX, used for formatting highly mathematical text. Formula is the format which greater control over resulting of document. Then one format is page description language, PDL. And Adobe uses this PostScript and PDF. This is similar to that, to image, but the formatted page display to the user are text-based rather than image-based. Uh, Adobe, etc. if you look at it, it is generally looking as the 
image based format and postscript and pdf format can easily be captured during typesetting documents stored as pdf acquire acrobat reader at the user end to read you are bound to use acrobat reader to read pdf and uh, this pdf part of the pdl portable document is a byproduct of postscript and i would adopt page description language that has come, become standard way to describe pages electronically in the graphic world so even in shodh ganga we accepted pdf as the open standard to read and adobe software is free to read only editing you need to buy it otherwise it's okay it's free while postscript is program language pdf is a page description language this is the difference the page image format quickly i will tell some of the names wiki which is known to you like you might have been using photograph etc which is generally jpeg format or png format now there is another format called tiff which is most commonly used to page image file format tiff stand for tagged image file format and is considered to be de facto standard for bitonal images images can be colored grayscale and white color they can be compressed skewed crop using several algorithms are there image file are much larger than text file so it needs a different format compression is necessary because every image quality images has huge file size text files are generally very small in size some of the format mentioned above are developed by iso and itu and uh, finally we are coming to the preservation standard one preservation standard is premise preservation metadata and implementation strategies the premise it was released in 2005 not very old this is for preservation any digital document is preserved you have to standard premise data dictionary is a comprehensive practical source of implementation premise is also developed as a set of xml one standard open archival information system oais describe all functional dispositories i am just telling all these forms or uh, standards just for your further reading oais reference model was developed by consultative committee for space and data systems oai reference model provides high level overview of types of information preservation description format pda and the presentation with that i conclude the standards protocol it is little longer because lot of technological terms were discussed so i once again recall your attention to the protocol discussed like tcp ip http ftp bibliographic standards like mark dublin corp bibi ti ead mats mods record structure that iso encoding standards like unicode ascii then information retrieval standards like z39.50 and 80 srw oipmh open url and format and media used for structured format sgml xml html pdf jpeg t tif premise oai these are some of the standards and protocol used in digital library i wish you all the best to work with any of this protocol or all of the protocols please re read it again it's a pleasure reading the technology behind the digital library thank you very much